Hello everyone, I'm Maria Candy C. Padis, and welcome to Nuclear Science. Our topic for today is all about thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the branch of physics that deals with the relationships between heat and other forms of energy. In particular, it describes how thermal energy is converted to and from other forms of energy and how it affects matter. Let us define some terms that we will use in thermodynamics. Heat is a kind of energy which is transferred from one system to another due to temperature difference. System. Heat flows into or out of, and work is being done on or by it. A system is the collection of objects or particles which we focus on while everything else is the surroundings. Temperature. It is a property of a material that tells how hot, warm, or cold that something is in relation to some standard measure. Also, temperature is related to the speed at which atoms and molecules in a substance are moving. The higher an object temperature, the faster its atoms or molecules move. Heat is transferred between system and its surroundings because of temperature difference. Heat is an energy that flows from a higher temperature object to a lower temperature object. Heat is a transfer of internal energy. When a hot object comes into contact with a cold object, heat flows from hot to cold simultaneously. Laws of thermodynamics. First, we have the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Next, we have the first law of thermodynamics. We also have the second law of thermodynamics. And lastly, we have the third law of thermodynamics. Let's discuss them one by one. So the first law is the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Zeroth law of thermodynamics. If object A is in thermal equilibrium with object B, and object B is in thermal equilibrium with object C, then A and C are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So what does it mean? If A is equals to B and B is equals to C, then is A is equal to C. So what is thermal equilibrium? So two systems in thermal contact are in thermal equilibrium if they have zero net heat flow between them since they are of the same temperature. Come and join me. Let's do an experiment. For the zeroth law of thermodynamics experiment, we need the following materials. First is we have the basin. We also need two beakers, three thermometers, ice, some tap water, and some hot water. Okay, for the procedure, we need to put the tap water on the basin. After that, we need to put the crushed ice on one of the beaker. And you can also put some water in it so that it will be a cold water. Then, we need to put some hot water on the second beaker. For the procedure, you need to measure the temperature of the beaker with cold water, which will be our object A, and the beaker with the hot water, which will be our object C, and the basin with top water, which will be our object B. Then, you need to put the beaker with cold water, which is the object A, and the beaker with hot water, or the object C, without them touching each other, inside the basin with the top water, or the object B.
So the initial readings that I've got is from the beaker with cold water, which is the object A, it is 0 degrees Celsius. And the beaker with the hot water or the object C, it is 74 degrees Celsius. And for the top water or the basin with the top water or the object B, I've got 28 degrees Celsius. So leave the set up for 40 minutes in room temperature. And after that, you need to check the temperature of the beakers and the basin once again. So I've got, from the, for the object A, I got 28 degrees Celsius. For the object B, I got 28 degrees Celsius. And for the object C, I also got 28 degrees Celsius, which means they have a thermal equilibrium. Based from the experiment, we proved that if object A or the beaker with the cold water is in thermal equilibrium with object B or the basin with top water and object B or the basin with top water is in thermal equilibrium with object C or the beaker with hot water, then object A or the beaker with cold water and object C or the beaker with hot water are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So the zeroth law of thermodynamics states that if two closed systems with different temperatures are come into contact, then heat is transferred from high temperature to low temperature. It is also the basis for temperature measurement of a body or object. So the zeroth law of thermodynamics is the law that they use for designing the thermometer. Now let's move to the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy and matter cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. The first law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, rather, the amount of energy lost in a steady state process cannot be greater than the amount of energy gained. This is the statement of conservation of energy for a thermodynamic system. It refers to the two ways that a closed system transfers energy to and from its surroundings by the process of heating or cooling and the process of mechanical work. So the rate of gain or loss in the stored energy of a system is determined by the rates of these two processes. In open systems, the flow of matter is another energy transfer mechanism and extra terms must be included in the expression of the first law. Come and join me. Let's do an experiment. For the first law of thermodynamic experiment, we need some basin, a balloon, a bottle, and some hot water. For the procedure, you need to cover the top of the bottle with the balloon and place the bottle at the middle of the basin. Next is you pour the hot water in the basin and you need to observe what will happen to the balloon. Voila! The balloon expanded! Let us all remember, before the system managed to transform the heat input into work, it is stored inside the system as internal energy. Based from the experiment from the first law of thermodynamics, we can say that change in internal energy is equal to heat given to system and the work done by system. So the system there is the air inside the bottle and balloon and the surrounding or the hot water has higher temperature. So we can say that heat is equals to positive VE or the heat flow into the system while work is negative VE or work done by the system. So let's move to the second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics states that in natural thermodynamic process, the sum of the entropies of the interacting thermodynamic systems never decreases. Let's do some experiment. 
The materials needed for the second law of thermodynamics experiment are, so we have the pitcher with water, we need two balloons, a candle, a matchstick, and a balloon pump. For the procedure, we need to pump one balloon with air. And for the second balloon, we need to put some water in it. After putting some water, we need to put some air also in it. Then we need to light up the candle and try the first experiment with the balloon. The, the first balloon that we're going to use is the balloon with air. So what will happen? So the balloon exploded. And for the, the second balloon, balloon with water... So we put the balloon with water on the top of the candle and let's see what will happen. So after few minutes still, it doesn't burst. Based from the experiment, when we place the balloon on the flame, the energy is transferred from the candle to the balloon in the form of heat. Heat flow will generate entropy. So heat flow is equals to entropy. So why does the first balloon blow up? It is because the heat from the candle is transferred to the air inside the balloon. This caused the air to expand and the balloon burst within a few seconds. The next question is, second balloon containing water did not blow up. Why? For the second balloon, heat is transferred to the water as it is a great conductor of heat. The water closest to the flame heats up and begins to rise. The cooler water absorbs more heat and the process repeats. Due to the convection process, the balloon does not burst. It may take a longer time to burst. Let's move on to the third law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of any crystalline material at absolute zero temperature will be zero. The absolute zero temperature is the reference point for determining the entropy of a system. As a system approaches absolute zero, all processes cease and the entropy of the system approaches a minimum value. If the entropy of each element in some perfect crystalline state be taken as zero, at the absolute zero of temperature, the entropy may become zero, and thus so become in the case of the perfect crystalline. Let us look at the figure. So the figure is the ice lattice and the other one is close to absolute zero. So in the crystalline form, water molecules still have some entropy. There's enough thermal energy left to cause them to vibrate within the general area of their lattice sites. At any instance, the water molecules will be near but probably not exactly at their lattice positions. If we cool the solid further, the thermal energy decreases and the water molecules spend less time away from their lattice positions. As you approach absolute zero, the entropy will be zero. The third law of thermodynamics, at absolute zero, the entropy of a pure crystal is zero. In simple terms, the third law states that the entropy of most pure substances approaches zero as the absolute temperature approaches zero. This law provides an absolute reference point for the determination of entropy. The entropy that are made relative to this point is the absolute entropy. Another application of the third law is with respect to the magnetic moments of a material. Paramagnet paramagnetic materials or moments random will order as T approaches zero Kelvin. They may order in a ferromagnetic sense with all moments parallel to each other, or they may order in an antiferromagnetic sense with all neighboring pairs of moment anti-parallel to each other. A third possibility is spin glass, where there is a residual entropy. This figure shows 
the thermometers comparing Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin scales. And lastly, the third law of thermodynamics is important because it helps in calculating the thermodynamic properties and it also explains the behavior of solids at a very low temperature. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching or you learned something from this video.